Do want to take a live look here over at the Israel Gaza border. One of many shots that we have from across that area in the Middle East. As we do get to this breaking news that we have been covering, this involves an apparent terror attack that happened at a checkpoint over near Jerusalem. This is actually over in the West Bank, we're told. I do want to pop up some of this video that has now been provided by the Israel police. As you can see, crews are there at the scene. Now, we are told the 15-year-old stabbing suspect who stabbed those security forces has died. I do want to talk about this and all of the latest developments here. So let's bring in Yohanan Plesner, the president of Israel Democracy Institute. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. Hi, Josh. Thanks for having me. Of course. Well, first, I want to talk about this developing story here. What do we know about this apparent terror attack? Uh, well, Hamas has a goal of trying to uh, lead to escalation in the, in, in the West Bank as well. The idea in the holy month of Ramadan, the holy month for, the, for Muslims, is to allow the violence to spill over from Gaza to the West Bank. This is their overarching goal, and they're encouraging uh, their activists in, in this holy month to, to actually carry out attacks. There was an attack on, uh, to, to some extent, the, the sort of the border crossing between the West Bank and Israel proper, and a terrorist uh, attacked the Israeli, uh, apparently, security guards and was uh, neutralized. And we are told as of right now, again, this is video from that scene, the suspect was years old here. Are attacks like this happening more often than maybe we realize? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, um, I mean, the, there's unrest in, in the West Bank. Again, an attempt to, to spill over the violence. The, the Hamas vision was to try and orchestrate a multi-front attack on Israel from Gaza, uh, from Lebanon by Hezbollah, uh, uh, from the Houth Houthis in Yemen, basically to try and sort of uh, close in on Israel from uh, multiple fronts. And, uh, and, and those uh, attacks are, are basically a subset of it. So we're experiencing them. But so far, this uh, uh, vision, Ar Armageddon-type vision of trying to get everything to blow up has, has not succeeded, and other fronts uh, are, are being uh, contained. There's been a lot of talk here, especially over the last several weeks, about a potential hostage release and ceasefire deal. There's been reports that it's close. There's also been reports that Israel has agreed to a temporary truce, but that uh, essentially Hamas wants a full ceasefire. Does it appear that we are any closer to actually seeing a deal that would lead to at least a temporary ceasefire and the release of all of those remaining hostages? Well, this is a tragic situation. Hundred and uh, more than 130 Israelis uh, are uh, being uh, held hostage in uh, Gaza, including women and children and old people. And uh, it doesn't seem like we're very close to uh, uh, to this tragedy uh, uh, being ended. Israel agreed in the Paris talks a few weeks ago to the parameters of a deal that was put forward by uh, the Qataris and the Egyptians. Uh, with obviously American brokerage and support. Israel agreed to a temporary ceasefire and to pay some heavy prices in order to get our hostages uh, back. But it doesn't seem that Hamas is interested in, uh, in such a deal, in a temporary ceasefire and in releasing the hostages. Hamas's vision is to try and do what they did on October 7th, to try and, uh, I would say, rely on the holy month of Ramadan as an opportunity to lead to further escalation and a hostage deal with a, a with a uh, uh, with a ceasefire would actually uh, would undermine this Hamas goal. So it doesn't seem like Hamas is really interested in the deal. Uh, Israel agreed to the parameters of that deal, and Hamas basically uh, pulled back. They're trying to lead to escalation, as we've seen just this morning in the West Bank. And, uh, and, and in this respect, uh, it seems like uh, there, there, there might be a need to put more pressure on Hamas before they actually agree to release the uh, hostages. We also know as we go to northern Israel, we have the fighting between Israel and Hezbollah. So I want to get your take on this. Which is the bigger threat to Israel, Hamas or Hezbollah? 
Well, both of them are obviously allied with uh, Iran. Iran is, is the biggest threat in the region, not only to Israel, but to the interests of the West, to the interests of the United States, of NATO, of the moderate Arab states in the region. And uh, Iran built a sort of a, a, a deployed, uh, an array of proxies. Hezbollah is one of them, Hamas is another. Uh, uh, clearly, Hezbollah is a stronger uh, uh, asset, uh, is a stronger Iranian asset. They have uh, more rockets, more missiles, more troops. They uh, they are well trained after taking part in the, in the Bashar al-Assad's barbaric war in in Syria. So Hezbollah and and they have a deeper, um, I would say, uh, a strategic uh, uh, depth in Lebanon itself and with the support of Iran. So uh, I hope that the situation in the north will be resolved without uh, 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 the escalation to a fully-fledged war. But we have to remember, dozens of thousands of Israelis have been evacuated from their homes in the north. Uh, hundreds of homes have been uh, uh, demolished and bombarded, and there's no life in that northern strip of Israel. So unless it will be resolved diplomatically, which is obviously uh, our uh, preference, uh, there will have to be a military move that will restore order and stability. What would a war look like between Israel and Hezbollah? You touched on this already, but is that something that is a reality? Well, right now, uh, there isn't a fully fledged war, but you know, Hezbollah just yesterday shot uh, dozens of uh, uh, rockets and missiles in, uh, at northern Israel. So, uh, and, and, and Israel so far is uh, refraining from a, a fully fledged uh, retaliation. Uh, because uh, of two main reasons. Number one, we want to focus the, the energies, the attention on dismantling Hamas's uh, governing capabilities uh, in Gaza. So you want to focus on that front. And number two, to give the, a chance to diplomacy, a diplomacy led by United States and other allies, uh, and also uh, in other powers in the region, to restore stability in a, in a, in a non-belligerent fashion. But obviously, if this cannot continue for much longer. And, uh, and a fully-fledged escalation uh, would be uh, a very unfortunate uh, development. Obviously, Israel will uh, tolerate casualties, but it will inflict much pain on, uh, on uh, Lebanon, on Lebanese infrastructure, in its attempt to uh, severely undermine Hezbollah capabilities in, in Lebanon. And basically, this is the... The, 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 I would say the jewel in the crown in the Iranian deployed assets in the region. So the real decisions are made in Tehran. And, and for that matter, we need to, to, uh, to deal with it and address it uh, uh, cooperatively. It's not only an Israeli matter, it's a regional and global matter for all of those who care about free trade, who care about undermining uh, 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 the uh, revisionist and uh, I would say medieval forces in the region that are allied with other uh, 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 negative uh, uh, forces in the world. Do you think that there could potentially at some point be U.S. troops on the ground in Gaza? No, I don't think there's a need for U.S. troops. Uh, uh, the U.S.-Israel alliance is extremely important. It's important for Israel. It's important for the U.S. It's important for the region. It's an anchor of stability, an anchor of moderation, and it contravenes the the Iranian uh, uh, the radical jihadist axis in the region. Israel does not need uh, an American uh, assistance in, in boots on the ground in, in, in Gaza, but certainly uh, uh, we need uh, uh, the U.S. backing in ammunition, in diplomatic support, in helping uh, in, in, in expand and solidify the alliance with, with other Arab states. All of those radical jihadists in the region need to understand that ultimately uh, their plans are going to be undermined and, uh, and that the moderate powers in the region uh, will prevail. And this is clearly the interest of the West, the, the interest of the United States. And I, and I believe and hope we will get there. I want to talk about the U.S. and the U.S. involvement there as well, uh, going a little bit deeper into this. If Biden were to put 
restrictions uh, on some of the military assistance being provided to Israel. How would that impact a possible Rafah offensive, but also the war itself against Hamas? Well, I mean, so far, when we look at this uh, uh, war in Gaza, and obviously in, in the broader regional context, and I can say the U.S. has proven uh, to be an extremely reliable ally. Israel has, has received convoys and convoys of, uh, of ammunition and uh, in replenishments in, in ammunition, obviously, uh, given the extent of the threat, both from the north and the south, uh, the U.S. played a very important role, and although there are differences in, uh, I would say, in uh, mainly on how to uh, um, how to address and formulate the uh, post-war uh, 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 Gaza arrangements, in terms of the actual collaboration around the fighting, uh, there's no daylight between the Israel and the U.S. And I think it's a very important message for the entire region to uh, uh, to learn that the United States, regardless of whoever is on top, uh, it, it, it has a bipartisan commitment to moderate powers in the region. Those are the sort of moments of truth of an alliance, and that uh, and the U.S. is proving that it can be uh, relied upon as a, as a military ally, and it's a very, very important message. All right, Yohanan, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today and break down the latest details. Anything else you want to add about any of this before I let you go? Well, first of all, thanks and, and, and glad to be here. And I, and I think that the most important uh, element is if something happens up north, uh, the deterrence vis-a-vis -vis Iran is extremely important because Iran is really behind the, uh, all of the developments in the region, and this needs to be understood, including by their uh, uh, Qatari allies. All right. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, I do want to take you back to this video that came in from Israel police not too long ago as we continue to follow the latest on the breaking story here. Police saying that a 15-year-old rode his bike to the tunnel's checkpoint in the West Bank near Jerusalem today. During the inspection at the checkpoint, they say he pulled a knife and attacked the forces that were operating there. A civilian security guard began to confront the terrorists, they say. And in the meantime, the Israel forces uh, that were in place, they say, quote, neutralized him by shooting. Two transit security personnel were hurt from the stabbings and they were evacuated in mild and moderate condition, we're told, for medical treatment at the hospital. There's been no update on their condition, but again, the 15-year-old suspect here killed by police. As we get any more information on that, we'll make sure to bring it to you right here on Live Now from Fox. And coming up here in just about 15 minutes or so, we'll be joined live by a man who was the senior advisor to the U.S. Ambassador to Israel, David Friedman, during the Trump administration. He He's going to talk more about some recent comments by President Biden about Netanyahu and a, quote, very senior Israeli official telling newspapers that the U.S. is actually trying to oust Netanyahu. Again, that is coming up here in just a matter of minutes.